Hello, everyone, and welcome to July. And with July, a brand new Rotary year. We are in the year of creating hope in the world. And I want to congratulate the four district governors of the four districts that Waterton Glacier International Peace Park Association is connected to. Kurt in 5360, Brent in 5370, Rick in 5390, and Doreen in 5080. May you all have the best year. I know you have exceptional clubs to visit, and I know that it's going to be a magical year for all of us. For me, we're stepping from our first year to our second year as president of the Waterton Glacier International Peace Park Association. Last year, I asked everybody to imagine and inspire peace. And I'm gonna continue that conversation this year with the tag that when we inspire and when we take action where peace is concerned, then we do create hope in the world. And I don't know more hopeful a place in the world than Waterton and Glacier. They are stunning places to be where I connect back to my inner peace and to my inner hope. And so with that, I want to welcome Bill Dunwoody, who is Vice President of Waterton Glacier International Peace Park Association, and he's also the co-chair of the upcoming Waterton Assembly in September. So Bill's going to share with us all the exciting stuff that's happening in Waterton Park, and hopefully you will be there and join us for this exciting time. Bill, welcome. Thank you, Maria. Yeah, we do have a very um, exciting uh, plan for, for this uh, coming September. Um, our team has been working on this for um, close to a year now already. And um, we have a lot of, of important and, and exciting activities that I think we're going to be uh, engaged in. First of all, uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, traditionally we have done uh, a different weekend in September, but this weekend or this year, we are doing a, um, a little bit later. Um, um, time to, to meet. Uh, and this is partly, there's multiple reasons involved in this, but I don't need to get into the details. But one of the reasons is that we wanted to include the International Day of Peace in our, um, in our activities. So we've actually extended the, the term or the duration of the, of the assembly to include September 1st, excuse me, September 21st, not September 1st. That would be very yeah, long. So that's that's a Thursday, right? Thursday, September 21st. It is, it is a Thursday, right. It's a Thursday, September 21st. And the re reason we're doing that is because we're working on a special project this year. Um, the uh, Peace Garden uh, that we've been working on, many of you are probably aware of this, that we've been working on a Peace Garden at Waterton uh, Lakes National Park. And um, it, that is coming to an end, not to an end, but it's a, a, a good beginning. Um, and we are um, making some plans to actually do a service project for that on the 21st. So on the 21st, uh, we'll be gathering to, to do some uh, work on the uh, garden itself and to have a peace pole dedication uh, at that time. Uh, Peace Bowl dedication is planning planned for three o'clock in the afternoon, and then after that we're going to get together um, at a local uh, restaurant and just have a gathering of friends. Which will be the next day because it'll be wonderful for us all to see each other and to celebrate yes. work because there is quite a bit of work to make this garden a reality, and right. it's now coming to fruition. And it it will take two years for it to really come into full being. Um, but this is the the initial dedication, and it's a very exciting time. For those who can't be there on Thursday, it's unfortunate, but for those who will be able to join us for Thursday, this is a very special um, pre-assembly event, if you will, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And we don't expect everybody to be there, but those people who can, definitely your your uh, talents and, and participation um, and your presence um, in general just will be very much appreciated. Um, Friday, our normal day to start um, in the in the morning, um, we have plans for some recreational activities. Um, Alan Johnson is is working on um, the uh, golf tournament. Um, we don't have anything formally um, 
planned um, for that. No sign up for registration or anything, but uh, please contact Alan with regard to uh, participating in that if that is your desire. There's also a lot of activities that can happen uh, within the park itself. There's all kinds of tours and activities, um, hikes and, and um, uh, regular boat rides and, and all kinds of different things that, that can happen. And we have a link to a special guide for that in the registration. What we do have planned is that in the morning, uh, about 10 o'clock or so, um, we will be doing a, um, a boat trip to Goat Haunt. Now, Goat Haunt is the uh, official border uh, patrol location <laughs> Um, on the, the Canadian um, and U.S. border, and um, they have a peace pavilion there. And our goal is to take a trip to Goat Haunt. Um, we're, we are working on a couple of things. One is a for those who um, are energetic, young and energetic, <laughs> or older and energetic, um, we are planning a, a one-way trip to Goat Haunt and then a one-way hike back to Waterton Township. Um, and my feeling is uh, a hike is is too too hard of a word. Uh, some people like the word hike. I like the word uh, saunter. Um, and that corresponds to um, a philosophy uh, that I believe in that you know you should not hike to achieve a goal of reaching a, a mountaintop. Or destination but to saunter and enjoy the wilderness and this is a relatively easy saunter in that it is at lakeside the there there's correct no right. name, so there's no concerns around that it is a rather long hike back and just to be clear um goat haunt is the u.s landing in glacier correct when you take the boat you take the boat past the international line and it is quite striking to take the boat and be on the water and to see the cut line on either side um, when you get to go and haunt you are firmly in the u.s and that is the only place in the world where you can get your passport stamped with the waterton glacier international peace park stamp in your passport so um, make sure you bring your passport so that you can get that stamp for those of us who maybe need to be back on town site earlier or are not quite up for the hike, no worries. We can take the round trip boat, right? We we can get. That around. is correct. We have two options. We have a one way one way boat trip uh, with a hike or a, a two way boat trip, um, and that is part of the registration. So we take care of all the arrangements for that. All you need to do is sign up for it when you register. In the afternoon, for those people who don't. Um, decide to do the hike. Um, we do have several, again, those activities that are available in the, in the Waterton area, as well as um, we're asking that um, a number of people, if they, if they um, feel the urge to um, help out and participate, to help us do a setup um, of the uh, facility. We're gonna be meeting as usual at the Waterton Community Center. So we need to do, we need to set up tables and those types of things. Um, so that is not a threat to the directors. To the directors, we invite you to come and join us and help us set up correct chairs and help us set up registration because formal registration doesn't happen until Friday night, right? Right. So on Friday night, uh, about six o'clock, we have our opening reception at the community center. Uh, we will have um, just basically gathering and and, and some food um, and just a time to uh, regain old friendships and develop new friendships. Saturday is our big day. Um, both Saturday and Sunday are bit Sunday are big days, but Saturday is the biggest day. Starting at eight o'clock in the morning, uh, we have our board of directors meeting. Uh, that includes breakfast. There's also a separate breakfast for attendees um, of the um, of the assembly that um, does not include the boardroom. Um, 10 o'clock, we begin the assembly in, it, in itself. Um, we start off with a welcome, and then we have uh, Fran Leggett, who's going to give us a, a vision of peace in the world, Waterton Glacier International Peace Park. It's a discussion mm -hmm. or a, a, a uh, presentation. 
And then Jeff Mao, uh, reflections on the IPP fires impact. Uh, after that, um, we will have another, two more presentations, one from Cam Stewart. He's uh, on cultivating relationships with indigenous communities. And then Jenny Feek, um, Tales from the Great Divide, a discussion about hiking the Great Divide Trail. And it's important to note that Jenny is also going to be uh, hosting the, the hike back from Goat Hunt, right? That's correct. She will be on trail and she will be leading that hike. So getting to know Jenny is a wonderful opportunity here for those who are interested in hiking. Um, Fran has such a long history with Waterton Glacier as a director and uh, it, as a member of the executive. She carries so much history and it will be fascinating to see her pictures and, and to hear her story. She also works at, worked as a historian, um, I believe, at the University of Lethbridge. So uh, yes. I, I can't wait to hear her perspective and, and what she has to say about it. And of course, Jeff Mao is former superintendent of Glacier Park, and he was superintendent during the time of the fires. So this is going to be a powerhouse of speakers who, who speak from the heart and who are deeply connected to the land and, and understand and can help us to understand the challenges as well as just the beauty. Very good. So in addition, I, I mean, this includes a box, a box lunch as well. We're not going to starve you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> oh, um, after that, at three o'clock, we're going to we will have our um, annual general meeting. I uh, just want to remind everybody that anybody who is a Rotarian in the four districts, 5360, 5370, 5390, and 5080 are all voting members um, and can vote during the um, annual assembly. So I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of that. That's a really good point because the reality is not every Rotarian in the four districts even knows what Waterton Glacier Park is, much less that there is an association that they belong to, that they are automatically members of the association by being a Rotarian in good standing. And what that means is that they have a voice at the AGM table. So um, I will be leading that meeting as president of the association. And I can tell you, we have a lot of really interesting stuff to report on in terms of the activities of our six action teams and uh, what we've done this year, what we hope to do in the coming year and years, because of course we're also heading into 2025 when Rotary International will have their convention in Calgary. So we have a lot of exciting things planned for that meeting that we're hoping that all Rotarians in the four districts uh, can come and be a part of and get inspired to take action because you can also be members of our action teams, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's very, very rewarding to be in, included in, in the action teams. I'm a member of four, if I recall correctly. <laughs> <laughs> um, grass, grass grow under your feet, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. So uh, after our uh, annual general meeting, which, which ends at 430, we're gonna, we have a little bit of a break. Um, we have a break of about an hour and a half, so you can get refreshed, take a short nap. Don't forget to set your alarm. It's and supposed um, to get dolled up because we have our early morning. Oh, morning. that's true. And then we yes. got the gala, and we need to put on our dancing shoes, right? That's right. So for the gala, uh, we have a a um, plate of dinner that we have planned for the the gala, and again, this is at the community center. We have a special guest, uh, Craig Davidson, who is the COO of Rick Steves Europe, and he's going to be talking about their. Um, uh, climate smart commitment, uh, self-imposed carbon tax that the uh, Rick Steves Europe organization um, has developed and lives by um, in their um, travel philosophy, and they, pr they promote this as well. I am so um, excited that Craig is going to be a part of this. Yeah. Because honestly, um, Rick and Craig together have created this incredible way of, 
of doing this self-imposed carbon tax, as they call it. And they're revolutionary in the travel industry, and they've been invited to conferences, and they're so generous. They give the framework of this to any travel organization who wants to follow it. But now they've had years of practice with it, and they've seen the rewards of what they have done and how they have done it. So that we're going to learn about this uh, from the master, from, from the gentleman who not only created it, but then implemented it, and, and his... Uh, the stories to tell about it. I, I can't wait to hear Craig talk with us. Yeah, it looks promises to be a very interesting and, and informative uh, evening. In addition, uh, we're hoping to, we're planning, actually we have many um, scheduled um, youth exchange students to be at the organization. If you're involved in youth exchange in your district, please, please let us know uh, so that we can make sure that Everyone is included in this. Um, and then we have entertainment. Uh, we're still working on the details of that, but we have some entertainment uh, planned for that evening. Uh, music, uh, people are so um, uh, wish to dance, then that's time to, to be, do some dancing and discussion and, and uh, just enjoying yourself for that evening. It's music that will keep us awake, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> we're going to need that by the end of the day. It's going to be a long, very rewarding day. Um, Absolutely. But, but it will be a long day. Um, and, and I do want to say something about the international students, because I have to say, having the inbound students sitting at the tables, I have learned more from those gala dinners when, when we've got an inbound student sitting at the table with us, and they're sharing with us their experience of Canada and um, and of the U.S. versus where they've come from, what they've noticed, what they've observed, what they'll be bringing back home. It's it's a really wonderful opportunity, mm -hmm. and it's a great way for us to to spread our message globally, our, our message of peace and understanding and environmental sustainability. So As that's one of, the, one of the things that we do. Last the last time uh, when we met. Um, in the U.S., um, that was one of the things that we we made sure we did. We included them in uh, the exchange students in our process. Um, it provided them with ideas and how can they um, spread peace within their own countries, within their own communities when they return. Absolutely. And we send them home with the hands across the border peace pledge, which I know you're yes. about to talk about. So. Yes. So the next morning, um, Sunday morning, uh, not bright and early, but reasonably early, nine o'clock, uh, we start with a non-sectarian celebration of peace, love, and life. Um, and um, this includes a brunch, again, at the Waterton Community Center. Um, this is where we get to op um, kind of operationalize or, or experience um, the gathering. The, the gathering of people, the um, expression of our feelings um, with regard to peace, love, and life, and, and how can we make the world a better place, um, both within our, our families, within our, our communities, within our clubs, um, and around the world. So that's really um, what we're trying to accomplish during that, that time. And uh, it's, again, it's another gathering. 11.30, we do our traditional hands across the border ceremony. I've, I've participated in two, um, one in Waterton back in 2013 and one um, most recently last year. Um, and it's really um, a, an interesting experience standing across an artificial border, um, across the border from uh, someone from in my in my life, Canada, because I'm from the U.S. and um, talking, shaking their hand, uh, pledging peace, and um, you come away from that with with a uh, a really good feeling of of what can we accomplish, what have we accomplished, and then at that point we um, adjourn adjourn the assembly, um, have a lot of discussions. Uh, we do have some, some tear down to do, but that's, you know, for those people, those uh, directors who are able to stick around for another hour or two. Um, 
we um, at that point we adjourn and and then begin planning for the the next year. So it it is really something to look people in the eye across the border and and say to them to really say the the peace pledge to them eye to eye and i know our past uh, our immediate past president at handel um his mission was to make sure that you took the pledge out and you took it to two people and they took it to two people and just let it spread that way and it's it's quite miraculous i like to make sure that all inbound uh foreign exchange students have a bunch of the peace cards to take back with them so that they can do the peace pledge when they go back to their home country it's a very powerful experience um this year we get to do it in waterton next year we'll be back in glacier um and and here's the thing and i think it's important to mention for the registration and the registration link is in the description here um, you're going to notice that even though we're in Waterton in Canada, that the registration is in U.S. dollars. And I just want to take a minute to explain that. Historically, it is whatever club is hosting, that home club is, is doing all of the money exchange with it. And traditionally, we've had clubs that are in the country where the event is happening this year district 5080 passport club is the host club and district 5080 passport club has many canadian members but we also have many u.s members and the banking structure of that club is in the u.s so to keep it the way it's always been uh, we still needed to route everything through the u.s so i just want to explain that for anybody who's concerned or confused about that it is in u.s dollars exchange rate being what it is um, so I hope that that's not too terribly confusing for people, but that is the reason behind it. And I know I've been asked about that. And we, we did decide right up from this, from the beginning to make this a um, all encompassing fee as opposed to um, splitting out the, the various aspects. Um, it, it becomes very complicated. Um, I think, you know, I know there's some people who have strong opinions both ways. Um, and uh, I think that it's important that we um, try to 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 work with um, what we have, the way that we have things uh, set up and so forth. Yeah, um, we honor the caterers. We honor everybody who's contributing to this. We honor their time and their energies. And that's why we do it that way. Although the boat, if, if you are taking the boat to go haunt, that is an right. add, right? Yes. Right. That is, that is a, an add-on. Uh, primarily because not everybody's will have the opportunity to, to participate in that. That's right. Uh, everybody has the opportunity to participate in in all the other events that we have. Those are are separated out because they don't have that opportunity. Yeah, um, we want to make sure that people, if you're coming Thursday, that's great. And we'll love to work with you in the garden. We'll love to do the Peace Bowl dedication there. We're hoping to have a Peace Bowl dedication at Goat Haunt as well. That's in process. Um, so, so we may have up to two Peace Bowl dedications this time around. Um, but if you can't be there till Friday night or even Saturday morning, please still um, come and join us and register for the time that you can be there. Saturday program and Sunday, um, the the hands across the border is is the core of everything that we do. And at the end of the hands across the border ceremony, as Bill said, anyone who wants to stay and help us out in in pulling it down and getting prepared for next year, that would be lovely. Um, but we do recognize that people will have to travel, and we want to make sure that you have Sunday afternoon to travel home, um, or to spend a little more time in the park before you leave for home. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of people make this a um, a vacation and either come early, very early or stay late. Um, yeah. I know that I've experienced that last time. There was a number of people that I knew that were staying late. Um, and it is, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, I wish I could be there more often, but it's... it's well, you know, the story of the International Peace Park, the world's first international peace park, starts in Waterton because it all happened because 100 Rotarians from the U.S. and Canada gathered at the Prince of Wales Hotel, which is in Waterton, and they were looking down the lake, and they said, where no borders can be seen, no borders should be. That was the creation, the, the, the impetus for the creation, and a year later, 
um, the Peace Park was dedicated in Glacier. So this is where it all began. Come and join us in this glorious place. Um, and please make sure that you do your hotel reservations. We do have some discounts in hotels, but those books are, uh, those rooms are booking up fast. So please make sure you book, right, Bill? Absolutely. Absolutely. So for the, the um, low cost of $190 US, um, you get um, all the events that we have, except for the, the boat trip, and uh, which includes five, up to five meals. And um, you can't do better than that, really. Look forward to seeing you there. It just doesn't <laughs> include the rooms. So make sure you book your rooms and we can't wait to see you there. Bill, thank you so much for your time and for everything that you and the entire committee has done to make this such a special assembly. I can't wait to be there. Thank you. Much love, everybody. We'll see you next month. Namaste. Namaste.